Well, we'll create such an object. It's not very hard to do. Quite simply, we'll add a new mesh. Let's say you add a circle. And I'll get out of edit mode. And I'll clear its rotation location and apply its rotation. And I'll scale it down a little bit in edit mode. Now that can be my IKFK controller, similar to one here, moving between 0 and 1. However, it would be nice if I could move the controller up here without creating uh, an IK constraint. And I can make that happen by parenting it to another object. So then it can stay at 0, even though its parent moves to a different location. Let me scale down a bit more. I'll snap the cursor to this location. And then I'll add another mesh. I'll add a plane, subdivide these two edges, delete these two edges, and then move everything so it starts at 0. Sorry, I have x-axis mirror edit on. I'll turn it off, and then everything can move smoothly. And then I'll scale it relative to the cursor. And I'll scale it down in this axis as well. And all that was done in edit mode. So its location and rotation are unchanged in object mode. I'll apply its scale and rotation here. Then I'll select this control and parent it to it. Now I can select the parent and move it wherever I want. And if I open an N key panel, you can see that the location of the child is still at 0, 0. Now let's name things something nice. I'll name the circle ikfk.l. I'll name this ikfkbase.l. Now we'll go ahead and add those drivers. I'll select first this, this arm here. I'll delete I'll click on Show to show the IPO, which is already visible in this case. And then I'll hit N to bring up this Transform Properties key, select the curve, and then I'll click on Add Driver. And I'll select IKFK.L as a target. It's already using the X location, which is actually what I want in this case. Now I can hover my mouse over here somewhere, click I, and insert a default one-to-one -one mapping. Now the mapping isn't quite right because I don't really need the IK constraint to go into the negative or infinity at the end. So I can simply change the extend mode of the curve to constant instead of extrapolation. I'll make it linear in interpolation because that'll make it more intuitive what that, for instance, halfway is half IK, half FK, and three quarters is three quarters, and so on. I'll name this curve something nice, like IK, IK, FK, switch, dot L. So that'll make it nice and easy to find that curve in a list later on. Now you'll notice one of the interesting things here is that I've named my IK constraints, my constraints, and that's because when I'm doing animation on constraints that's really applying within an action and that channel needs to have a name for it to work and the name const or const.001 is not really very uh, informative so I named all my my uh, my uh, constraints in advance to some suitable names like I gave bicep.l I gave forearm.l and I gave hand.l which is actually a copy rotation constraint so now, how about getting this constraint working in all the other parts of the chain? That's actually pretty simple. I select each bone, click Show on the constraint that I'd like to be driven, and then select the same curve for that constraint. And now it's being driven by the same object in the same way. And that's all we need to get it working. 
Now, for instance, I can grab this control and nothing happens. But then I grab this and we have IK. Furthermore, to make life simpler, I can lock down unneeded transformations of this control. And there we have the IKFK switching that works on Mancandy's armature.